Hello, this is Patrick with New Jersey's Outdoor Adventures YouTube channel. Looking on Facebook Marketplace, they saw a DIY Ram Promaster van for sale. And Gary, the owner, allowed us to film it today. Although he didn't want to be on camera, he gave us full access so I could give you a tour inside. Now, this is a 2016 Ram Promaster 159 high top. He bought it used with the intentions of building out a custom DIY camper van. And there's the only rear windows, no side windows here. So it's pretty stealth looking. Let's check out inside. Up front, he has a shower compartment. There's a passenger side front swivel base. So that chair will swivel around and incorporate into the living space. In this compartment here right by the door, I see this in a lot of European models, it is a 12 volt refrigerator. This is a set power brand, has all the controls here on the back. And then his woodworking is pretty impressive for a DIY first time homemade build. He's got uh, drawer glides here. He cut out the side here for the vent and in the back, it ties into a 12 volt socket and there's a vent here on the side of the cabinet that allows this whole thing to breathe and put off any heat. And the latch up top here, that's what keeps it shut when you're driving. Dimmer switch here for the ceiling lights. So I can dim it down as well. And then there's a Renogy inverter on board. It's a 2000 watt countertop material butcher block. All the cabinets uses birch cabinet plywood. The floor is vinyl floor. Snap in, tongue and groove. He trimmed out the front pillar here in fabric. It's all sewn up nice and neat. Let's close this door and head inside. What a very open floor plan. I like this floor plan with the rear dinette that converts into a bed. Let's take a look at this cabinet storage here. Because the refrigerator occupies that portion, he left an area here which could be a spice rack. There's two compartments there. There's a large drawer with an induction cooktop. You could put up here on the counter. There's another drawer here. All the drawers have a lot of resistance to pull them out to open them so they won't come open when you're driving. You can see here the carpentry. Another large drawer as well. Big one on the bottom too. You can see here the rounded edge and the painting that he did to the cabinets. Very nice touches. Up here there's a ledge here. You can put some plants. This has a Victron solar controller and display here. There's 400 watts of solar on the roof. The 2000 watt inverter powers several electrical outlets on board. And there's some USB charges here. And then there is a diesel heater on board. That's the control for it. The step up in the floor is what houses the furnace. Pull on this little compartment here. This furnace has an air duct that goes into the living area, the air duct that goes into the back freshwater tank area, and then below is the fuel line in and the exhaust out, and then in the back compartment is the fuel tank. Behind that, there's another cubby here below the floor. You put the vinyl floor on top of plywood. And there's another void you can put some items in. We have the kitchen galley area. Below the kitchen sink is a studer valve or air maintenance valve that allows air behind the water to allow the tank to properly ventilate. It goes through the floor into two separate gray tanks. This has the Bosch 120 volt water heater that will work when you're plugged into shore power. This plugs into this outlet right here, and that's what powers the water heater. And you can see all the plumbing 
that goes hot and cold to the kitchen sink faucet as well as the shower faucet. There's a composite granite bar sink here and a residential faucet. Plenty of counter space next to it. Even has the back lip here incorporated before he transitions to the wall material. Another USB and electrical outlet here. Then there's a light switch here for the shower. The remote control for the front max air fan. And a LED light strip over the kitchen area to give you some task lighting. Overhead roof lockers, plywood, routed edge, painted. All the transitions he had to box in around the ProMaster van. His back piece is on a 45, 90 degree angle here. Lots of complicated cuts. Two struts to keep it up and a lip on the front to keep stuff from sliding out. Another roof locker back here. Same thing, not as many complicated cuts though. There's another one back here. The bedroom max air fan with manual controls. Another overhead roof locker here, here, and here. So it's a lot of storage if you combine them all. The ceiling is all tongue and groove pine boards with rock wall insulation on the walls and ceiling behind the panels. The shower pan is a regular RV catalog item. He was able to buy and build the shower based on around it. It has a removable uh, toilet. This little, this, so it's not plumbed into a black tank. You use the toilet and it empties into the bottom portion where you could empty out into a public restroom. Shower curtain that slides on a rail track. And then to keep the shower curtain from dancing around when you're driving, it uses a little bit of this insulation that just slips around. And then there's a tie back here to keep it back as well. He used uh, wall material here, this is a waterproof wall material, residential tile with flexible grout, and a little cubby here for shampoo and conditioner, and a regular RV shower head with an RV faucet. It's nice that he designed this to have a wet path on board. It's really practical use of space. It doesn't take up that much floor space. There's plenty of room in the aisle. And then also, he was mindful to leave some space behind the driver's seat so people all different heights can adjust the seat without bumping into the shower wall. And it's also a coat rack area. Privacy curtain that slides across on a rail. And there's dedicated areas to Velcro it in place so you could do a little bit more stealth and have a little bit more privacy. Like I mentioned before, this passenger seat does swivel around, incorporates into living space. He left all the manuals for all the components that are on board in a book that whoever buys it will have the manuals for everything. The Ram ProMaster High top has this ledge over the driver and passenger seat for storage. So that's left open so you can put whatever you want up there. On the passenger sliding door, it was insulated. And he put these panels up that are removable. If you wanted to take them out and add a window down the road, just pop that panel off and trim it out for a window. Now I'm going to show you how to operate the rear bed. There's a lagoon table mount here. And it has ability to swing this table around in multiple positions. So. I wanted to sit in this back corner and do some work on a computer. If you had a, multiple people sitting around the table, someone could sit on this back ledge here. And this whole area converts into a bed as well. So I'm going to show you how to remove the table. First, we got to undo the legs here. The table itself will slip off. Lean it up here on the side. And then the table mount comes unscrewed. Lay that down on the floor. Now you can take the whole entire table and it lays on top of rails and fills that void. And then the backrests, which are just hung up on the wall on hooks, come off. And 
And you have a bed that you could sleep side to side if you wanted to. I'm five foot nine for a reference. I could fit across this bed and comfortable. Sleep diagonal if you would like. But the foam was all done professionally. It's all backed with a Luan board. There's foam inside. It's all wrapped and stapled in with carpet on the back. Uh, very nice job here in these cushions. They're light enough weight. And again, they just hook right onto the wall. So instead of relying on Velcro or snaps, hook it in place. So I can do it from back up, all the way up here. Just hook it on, hook it on. And then to bring it back from a table to a dining area, it's very simple. Slide the leg into the track of the lagoon table. Lock it in place. Then line up the hole on the bottom of the table. There we go. And then you can tighten it to keep it in place. Another cool thing that he incorporated was this rear bench seat. This bench comes off and it gives you access to the trunk area. So you could take this top panel off and you could get to the trunk. And then this middle board is removable. You can take that out. And then if you wanted to put long items through like a surfboard or bicycle, you have that dedicated space. First time I've seen that in a DIY conversion, that removable board, it required a little bit extra trimming, but I think it's a very mindful upgrade that he did. On this side here, when we remove the cushion out of the way, gain access to this hatch that opens up and in here there's a strut that keeps it up and in place there's some wiring diagrams that he put in here for whoever the next owner will be there's one there one here and one here and this box right here is the wheel well so he utilizes that dead space that the wheel well takes up to incorporate all the breakers here the AGM battery that he has on board, 200 amp hour. The electrical breaker panel. The fuse distribution box. The transfer switch. An electrical outlet that powers multiple components. The 200 watt energy inverter. And the battery charger. Also here on the back is the DC to DC battery charger from Renergy, a battery kill switch, and a solar controller. This compartment here has room for expansion if additional batteries want it to be installed. And when you open up the back doors, it's accessible for service. So you have full access if anything needs to be changed, modified, diagnosed, or upgraded. On this side of the van is the water tank. So there's a water pump switch here on the bottom that operates a demand water pump that's on board. If you lift up the hatch, it gains you access to the fresh water tank, which is alongside of the uh, wheel well there. It's a, about a 30 gallon fresh water tank. It has a top vent system. So when you fill up the tank, allow air to vent out. There's one that goes straight out the back and there's one that goes up through the taillight pillar higher than the tank itself. On the bottom here, there's the water pump, the strainer for the water pump, and the city water connection and low point drains are all there on the bottom. It's all PEX tubing on board. You crimp the fittings on the end. It's got brass elbows. And you can see the construction to put the cabinetry together. It's all plywood with pocket hole screws premium plywood here on the top, routed handles here so it's nice and smooth on your hand when you go to lift it up. Very mindful conversion. There's also an 
uh, LED reading light here above the bed. The tongue and groove pine board here on the wall continues from the ceiling, but it's painted and smoothed out. Before we head out back to take a look at the garage, take a look at the craftsmanship of this tabletop here. It's got a solid edge to it. Stained top, nice and smooth. Sanded premium plywood here. And then it's all pocket hole screwed on the bottom. Now we'll head outside and take a look at the tank underneath in the back garage area. Underneath here is a split gray waste tank, one for the shower, one for the kitchen sink, and then it wires together to one discharge area. You can hook up a regular garden hose to that fitting. This is where the shore power hookup is when you want to plug in at home to charge or a campground. On the roof is uh, solar panels as well as the two max air fan lids. In the back here where there's a step bumper. Look how wide these Ram Promasters are for loading cargo. Incorporated a rear privacy shade here that goes across the back. There's a backup camera as well. This gives you access to see your freshwater tank level. Right now there's RV antifreeze in it. And this is how you take out the jug when you want to put it out on the ground to fill it with diesel. And that is the supply line that goes to the furnace. Magnet catch here for the cabinet. We have the drain for the freshwater tank, the fill for the freshwater tank, and the vent for the freshwater tank. This is that removable board here that we saw inside. Underneath that is a large drawer. You also put carpeting in the bottom for some grip here. And then there's a compartment here for storage, but it also gains you access to the other side of the battery area. You can see the fuses, the kill switch, the uh, smart charge controller from Victron and their energy DC to DC battery charger. And then you can sit on this bench here and enjoy the view out the back. Well, this is Patrick with New Jersey's Outdoor Adventures YouTube channel. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please like this video, comment, share, and subscribe. I love it, and we'll see you soon.